Chapter 1 The Hermetic Philosophy The lips of wisdom are closed, except to the ears of understanding. The Kabbalion From old Egypt have come the fundamental esoteric and occult teachings, which have so strongly influenced the philosophies of all races, nations, and peoples for several thousand years. Egypt, the home of the pyramids and the sphinx, was the birthplace of the hidden wisdom and mystic teachings. From her secret doctrine all nations have borrowed. India, Persia, Chaldea, Medea, China, Japan, Assyria, ancient Greece and Rome, and other ancient countries partook liberally at the Feast of Knowledge, which the Hierophants and masters of the land of Isis so freely provided for all those who came prepared to partake of the great store of mystic and occult lore which the masterminds of that ancient land had gathered together in ancient egypt dwelt the great adepts and masters who have never been surpassed and who seldom have been equalled during the centuries that have taken their processional flight since the days of the great hermes in egypt was located the great lodge of lodges of the mystics at the doors of her temple entered the neophytes who afterward as hierophants adepts and masters traveled to the four corners of the earth carrying with them the precious knowledge which they were ready anxious and willing to pass on to those who were ready to receive the same all students of the occult recognize the debt that they owe to these venerable masters of that ancient land but among these great masters of ancient egypt there once dwelt one of whom the masters hailed as the master of masters this man if man indeed he was dwelt in egypt in the earliest days he was known as hermes trismegistus he was the founder of the occult wisdom the founder of astrology the discoverer of alchemy the details of his life story are lost to history owing to the lapse of the years though several of the ancient countries disputed with each other in their claims to the honor of having furnished his birthplace, and this thousands of years ago. The date of his sojourn in Egypt, in that his last incarnation on this planet, is not now known, but it has been fixed at the early days of the oldest dynasties of Egypt, long before the days of Moses. The best authorities regard him as contemporary of Abraham, and some of the Jewish traditions go so far as to claim that Abraham acquired a portion of his mystic knowledge from Hermes himself. As the years rolled by after his passing from this plane of life, tradition recording that he lived three hundred years in the flesh, the Egyptians deified Hermes and made him one of their gods under the name of Thoth. Years after, the people of ancient Greece also made him one of their many gods, calling him Hermes, the god of wisdom. The Egyptians revered his memory for many centuries, yes, tens of centuries, calling him the scribe of the gods, and bestowing upon him distinctively his ancient title, Trismegistus, which means the thrice great, the great great, the greatest great, etc. In all the ancient lands, the name of Hermes Trismegistus was revered the name being synonymous with the fount of wisdom. Even to this day, we use the term hermetic in the sense of secret, sealed so that nothing can escape, and this by the reason of the fact that the followers of Hermes always observed the principle of secrecy in their teachings. They did not believe in casting pearls before swine, but rather held to the teaching, milk for babes, meat for strong men both of which maxims are familiar to readers of the Christian scriptures, but both of which had been used by the Egyptians for centuries before the Christian era. And this policy of careful dissemination of the truth has always characterized the Hermetics, even unto the present day. The Hermetic teachings are to be found in all lands, among all religions, but never identified with any particular country, nor with any particular religious sect this because of the warning of the ancient teachers against allowing the secret doctrine to become crystallized into a creed the wisdom of this caution is apparent to all students of history the ancient occultism of india and persia degenerated and was largely lost 
owing to the fact that the teachers became priests, and so mixed theology with the philosophy, the result being that the occultism of India and Persia had been gradually lost amidst the mass of religious superstition, cults, creeds, and gods. So it is with ancient Greece and Rome, so it is with the hermetic teachings of the Gnostics and early Christians, which were lost at the time of Constantine, whose iron hand smothered philosophy with the blanket of theology, losing to the Christian church that which was its very essence and spirit, and causing it to grope through several centuries before it found the way back to its ancient faith, the indications apparent to all careful observers in the twentieth century being that the church is now struggling to get back to its ancient mystic teachings. But there were always a few faithful souls who kept alive the flame, tending it carefully, and not allowing its light to become extinguished. And thanks to these staunch hearts and fearless minds, we have the truth still with us. But it is not found in books to any great extent. It has been passed along from master to student, from initiate to hierophant, from lip to ear. When it was written down at all, its meaning was veiled in terms of alchemy and astrology, so that only those possessing the key could read it aright. This was made necessary in order to avoid the persecutions of the theologians of the Middle Ages, who fought the secret doctrine with fire and sword, stake, gibbet, and cross. Even to this day there will be found but few reliable books on the hermetic philosophy, although there are countless references to it in many books written on various phases of occultism. And yet, the hermetic philosophy is the only master key which will open all the doors of the occult teachings. In the early days, there was a compilation of certain basic hermetic doctrines, passed on from teacher to student, which was known as the Kabbalion, the exact significance and meaning of the term having been lost for several centuries. This teaching, however, is known to many to whom it has descended, from mouth to ear, on and on throughout the centuries. Its precepts have never been written down or printed, so far as we know. It was merely a collection of maxims, axioms, and precepts, which were non-understandable to outsiders, but which were readily understood by students, after the axioms, maxims, and precepts, had been explained and exemplified by the hermetic initiates to their neophytes. These teachings really constituted the basic principles of the art of hermetic alchemy, which, contrary to the general belief, dealt in the mastery of mental forces, rather than material elements, the transmutation of one kind of mental vibration into others, instead of the changing of one kind of metal into another. The legends of the philosopher's stone which would turn base metal into gold, was an allegory relating to hermetic philosophy, readily understood by all students of true hermeticism. In this little book, of which this is the first lesson, we invite our students to examine into the hermetic teachings as set forth in the Kabbalion, and as explained by ourselves, humble students of the teachings, who, while bearing the title of initiates, are still students at the feet of Hermes, the master. We herein give you many of the maxims, axioms, and precepts of the Kabbalion, accompanied by explanations and illustrations, which we deem likely to render the teachings more easily comprehended by the modern student, particularly as the original text is purposely veiled in obscure terms. The original maxims, axioms, and precepts of the Kabbalion are printed herein, in italics, the proper credit being given. Our own work is printed in the regular way, in the body of the work. We trust that the many students to whom we now offer this little work will derive as much benefit from the study of its pages as have the many who have gone on before, treading the same path to mastery throughout the centuries that have passed since the times of Hermes Trismegistus, the master of masters, the great great. In the words of the Kabbalion, where fall the footsteps of the master? The ears of those ready for his teaching open wide. The Kabbalion. When the ears of the student are ready to hear, then cometh the lips to fill them with wisdom. The Kabbalion. So that according to the teachings, 
the passage of this book to those ready for the instruction will attract the attention of such as prepare to receive the teaching and likewise when the pupil is ready to receive the truth then will this little book come to him or her such is the law the hermetic principle of cause and effect in its aspect of the law of attraction will bring lips and ear together pupil and book in company so mote it be end of chapter one recording by andrea fiore